Eternal Audit, our dedicated Facebook Live series. It's January. Where on earth did 2020 go? A new year is upon us and we're starting back with a brilliant live stream all about agile internal auditing. So grab a cup of tea and join me for a chat around how we might support each other through the ongoing challenges for internal audit as we move beyond the immediacy of COVID-19 pandemic into 2021. So who am I? Liz Sandwith, I'm the Chief Professional Practice Advisor at the Chartered Institute of Internal Auditors UK and Ireland. The Chartered Institute of Internal Auditors is the only professional body dedicated exclusively to training, supporting and representing internal auditors in the UK and Ireland. We have approximately 10,000 members in all sectors of the economy, all parts of the UK and Ireland. Members are part of a global network of some 200,000 members in 170 countries, all working to the same international standards and code of ethics. May I remind you that you can acquire CPE points for these talk to internal audit sessions so don't forget to log them using our CPE template. Details of how to claim CPE from this live stream can be found in the comments section. So today's topic, be an agile master to survive 2021. Gosh, what a title to start our year. Today's episode features practical tips and insights from guest speaker and Agile in Audit coach, Mark Williams. Mark, our guest today, defined being Agile as a mix of mindset plus tools. Whilst not everyone wants to take on the full Agile methodology and terminology, he argues that all internal audit teams could benefit from knowing more about these and working out what elements they could incorporate to make their audit planning and reporting faster, more relevant and more efficient. And aren't those superb goals to think about as we move into 2021 and beyond. Remember, if you like Facebook streams and want to spread the word, and I'm sure you do, be sure to share today's live stream. You can do that by clicking the share button in the corner of your screen. The more the merrier. I'm delighted to have Mark with us today sharing his agile expertise. At a recent virtual forum, Mark, you suggested if you currently do an annual audit plan, looking at doing a six month plus six month one might be the way forward and then progress to a three month cycle and aim for a 12 month continuous rolling process. So sitting here listening to me now and waiting with excitement about hearing Mark, can you do shorter, more nimble audits? Can you build your audit report iteratively over the course of the audit? So stakeholders get regular feedback throughout the process. Can you break your work down into cycles of one or two weeks? Sprints. Mark will build on this approach. I am really keen to explore with Mark how an agile approach will help us, internal auditors, get out of the weeds, lift our heads up, become ever more relevant to our organizations and also more efficient and effective in the work we do, delivering assurance regarding governance, risk and internal control to our stakeholders. If you're just joining us, welcome to our live stream Talk to Internal Audit. Today's theme is Be an Agile Master to Survive 2021. Our guest today, Mark Williams, defined being agile as a mix of mindset plus tools. So now may I turn to our guest today, Mark Williams. Firstly, Mark, perhaps you would share with us 
a bit about yourself and how you became so involved and aware of Agile methodology. Sure, thank you, Liz. Thank you for the introduction. Um, great to be here today, uh, and th thank you for this opportunity to have a have this conversation. Um, I I got into Agile uh, a good few years ago now as a, an IT delivery manager, program manager, project manager. Two thousand and five, I, I got into Agile. I I was lucky enough to work with a team who were quite exploratory in terms of uh, development team, quite exploratory in terms of their ways of working. And I soon got the bug and, and to the point where um, I was allowed the opportunity to build uh, a number of agile IT development teams. And as a development lead, I, I soon realised that the best thing I could do was the ultimate act of servant leadership. It was to step away and lead them to it. So I became their scrum master and um, I got into, into agile coaching, still in the context of IT, and then quite quickly um started to talk about how it would be great for other parts of most big organizations or big and big or small in terms of um you know what they could benefit from working this way and what we'd learned and it was my first real step outside of it um was was coaching a, a compliance department it was helping a compliance department work in a more agile way and it wasn't that long before I tipped into audit. I saw a couple of organizations using Agile in audit. And um, my first big break into Agile auditing was at, was at Nationwide. And I'm sure they won't mind me talking about it here. They, they're pretty, pretty collaborative in terms of sharing their approach. They hold a, an open day um, for, for auditors to talk about Agile in, in, in audit. And I was the coach there. And I've subsequently gone on to to specialise in uh, agility in audit and help auditors and audit departments work in a more agile way. And that I've, I've solely worked in that space for about three years now, Liz, and um, I, I really enjoy it. I've got lo lots of great empirical evidence, lots of data in the true audit style to, to suggest that it, it can really help. It can help us be all the things that you just mentioned in terms of the, the benefits, the potential benefits that we can get from working this way. Thank you, Mark, for that um, great introduction and to provide some background, which I think will be really important for our um, listeners to provide some context and uh, forgive me for saying, but perhaps some credibility to what they hear you go on to talk about, um, knowing that you have some real background experience in this, um, which is so important um, in terms of, you know, helping people change mindset perhaps and do things differently you define agile as a mix of mindset plus tools when we first met you challenged me about my definition of an agile mindset and i'm sure those of you that were tuning in to talk to internal audit last week will have heard me talk about agile mindset and mark contacted me through linkedin and challenged me in terms of my, in a nice way, of course, but in terms of my definition of mindset. So perhaps now, Mark, you can share with us your definition of what you mean by mindset and tools. So Liz, I, 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 um, I always talk about the fact that being agile is a means to an end. We, we we don't just do agile for the sake of it or we certainly shouldn't and um and and the the, the means to an end is is the things you mentioned to be to, to fundamentally to be a better auditor or a better uh leader in in ia and um and so when we when we think about when we think about being agile um it, it's very much a, a, an approach it's a way of working um, it's it, it is very much um, and, I'll, and we'll unpack this Liz as, as, as we go we'll, we'll, we'll unpack what I mean by the mindset um, but I I have seen some organizations both both internal audit and in IT and elsewhere tr tr try to be agile 
but don't really change very much. And um, and it's because they, they they use some of the tools. They use some of the agile tools. They you know I've seen it myself. Um, Mark, we're really agile. We're doing a daily stand up. And, and it yeah, it's it's a step. It's a step in the right direction. Um, but it's it's a tool uh, that, that perhaps is is a, a little bit blunt, if if not applied to a, 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 an organisation or a way of working that that really has agility at, at its centre, and the agile mindset is literally the, the 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 mindset, literally the way in which an agile-minded auditor would think, L literally the way that. A, 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 um, someone with an agile mindset might think. And so let's, let's quickly unpack that. So I've always described the mindset as go small. And this is the, this is the, the definition that you and I have shared. And you've been very unkind to yourself, Liz. I, I, was, I just said, look, I think I could sharpen up on your def, definition of, of agile. And this is off the back of working with hundreds of people to, to help them you know, be, be better and, 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 and use this to, to help them be better in whatever domain, whatever context that is. And so the definition that I always use is, is the mindset, which obviously sounds quite woolly. What's, my goodness, what's the agile mindset? It, it, it is this, it's go small, three elements to this, go small, limit your work in progress and listen to feedback. Go small, limit your work in progress, listen to feedback. And, um, there's, there's, a, there's a lot to, there's a lot to this so let me just give you a very a very quick explanation for each one of those and, and I think we're going to unpack them as we go throughout our conversation but but at the highest level literally the the agile mindset the the, the, the way in which an agile minded auditor would think is go small so go go small on something like the annual planning process you know could we think about how we might go small to deliver more often, to deliver more frequently, to have more collaboration in what we do. Go small in terms of our teams and our team design, go small in terms of the work that we do within our audits and delivering value quickly. So, so there's, there's, there's a whole raft of things around the, the, the theme of mindset, go small. The second limiting our work in progress is to do with the fact that we are knowledge workers, auditors. We, you know, we use our brains to, to, to create the product, the product here being our audit reports. And our brains aren't brilliantly wired for context switching, to change from one context to another in the context of audits, change from one audit to another. I'm sure, I'm sure you've experienced this, Liz, where you'll, you'll go from, you'll, you'll move from being really focused in the zone, in the flow, as I as I call it, working on one particular audit, you'll be you'll be deep in it, and that's where you're doing some really good, high quality quality work, and and then you have to context switch, and you you lose that, um, and I'm sure we all we've all experienced that 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 switch of context can be can be quite be quite damaging, damaging for our own focus and damaging for our efficiency. Can I just interrupt you there mm. a second, Mark, because we've had this conversation a little bit and I was brought up to run three audits at the same time because one audit you would be uh, doing your background, preparing your terms of reference, the other you'd be doing field work, and then the third you'd probably be writing your report, something like that, agreeing the recommendations or action plan. And, and the purpose of that, I was always taught when I was learning how to be an internal auditor and to be fair I've done it with you know my team in the past is that allows you to be more efficient and I know you're going to contradict me but hold, hold your breath because um, you will get downtime so you will be you'll have a meeting with someone arranged and then they'll be sick or something will happen and suddenly I've got half a day now, what do I do? Now, I know you, you've got a response to that, but that was what I was taught by, um, you know, senior colleagues. And I think that will be something I'm certain that people listening to us will be thinking, well, you know, I've always done three on the go. Um, so in today's world, when it is so important that we're more efficient in terms of what we do, share with our listeners, 
um, the message that you shared with me, because to be honest, you convinced me, I got where you were coming from because you had some brilliant data to support it. It's a, it's, it's a common question. And, you're, and, and Liz, the, da the data suggests, the research suggests that if you're in your scenario working on three audits in different, different parts of the audit life cycle, um, the data suggests that you're 60% less efficient than working on one thing at, at a time. So, yeah, it, it, is, it, is, it is a struggle. And, and the, the, it's a bit of a myth that, that, that it would make us more efficient to work on multiple things at the, at the same time to context switch. Because the evidence is that if we're allowed the luxury of focus, we can get things done quicker and to a higher quality and so I've, I've I hear what you're saying in terms of the problem applying this to internal audit and the problem of one audit has stalled you know or we're working on one audit and one of and it's stalled what do I do Mark and that's a common question and so I, as I always say well can can you can you stay in the same context can you stay can you stay focused and you stay in the same context, but find other things to do? Could you work on different controls? Could you work on a different risk? Could, could, you, could you remain in that, in that context? Point one. Um, no? Okay, well, maybe this is where it is efficient to accept the fact that you're going to be, perhaps the research says 20% less efficient by working on two audits at the same time, but accept that fact. Uh, and I, and I, do, I do hear that, and I've seen that, that, that case put forward, and I, and I do agree. There are times when actually um, you will need to run uh, have a primary audit and then maybe one in the background. That, that's a good coping strategy. And then um, the, the other point to make is that um, if, you, if you can, you know, it, I talk a lot about stable and focused teams. Teams are the building blocks of an agile way of working small teams small, and it's great this is why i love working in audit because teams are the building blocks of an agile way of working and auditors use teams and and so you know if we can if we can give them that 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 focus as i mentioned you'll you'll, you'll get you'll get you'll, you'll be more efficient um you you will get higher quality output they will feel more, more potentially what i've seen is I've, I've i've seen people being more engaged because they're they've they're they they have um, potentially one one set of oversight. So, so in terms of the team, they haven't got to, they haven't got to juggle mul multiple demands, multiple multiple um, uh, managers, um, and so very often what I've, what I've seen is actually the the the, the 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 side benefit, for want of a better description, is far more engaged and motivated people in terms of um, limiting work in progress. So there's a, there's a fair bit on that, uh, and um, it, 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 is imp it is important because sometimes that can get lost. I'm very rude about it, Liz. You've heard me talk about resource Tetris. This is, this is, this is the common pattern. We'll, we'll, we'll take Mark, he's an auditor, and, we'll, and he'll be working on four audits at the same time. Yeah. Well, what, what about, though, um, you know, as part of smaller teams, expectations that internal audit will do more with less um, likelihood of, you know, redundancies as we go through 2021. And, and I think we need to face that, it's not just internal audit, but I think it's across a whole raft of different professions, sectors, etc. Uh, is there a risk that if we adopt the approach that you've just said primary and maybe a secondary and therefore not lose our you know our efficiency and the, the 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 delivery of the product and the agile methodology is there any impact on the quality of the audit work do you think if we are focusing solely on one in in other words i'm wondering can we get too immersed and we stop you know, lifting our head up and thinking big picture? I don't think so. In fact, the evidence that I've seen is that smaller audits, smaller, more focused audits do get better QA results. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, so whether it's for, for whatever reason, for whether that's because they are more focused and all the scope of the audit is smaller. Um, 
but but I've certainly not seen any any detrimental impact to quality. Quite the opposite. If if you're if you if you if you haven't got to context switch, it, it's it's the it's the, the the damage that that context switching does. Um, it, it's it's just it means that we're more prone to errors. We miss things. And of course, that's important as an auditor, isn't it? You know, we 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 can't afford to miss things. No, no, you're absolutely correct, and it's reassuring to hear you say that you know potentially the quality isn't compromised, which I think is is very important. Um, but some of our listeners today won't just be practitioners, um, there will be managers, maybe even heads of internal audit. And their world, certainly from a manager's perspective and a heads of internal audit world, probably won't allow them to focus on one task at a time. They may get sidetracked into other things. Is there something you could share with more senior, perhaps, internal auditors who have responsibility for several members of the team and the work they're producing that would help them to be more agile. Yeah, and that's a really good point to make, Liz. Um, because obviously we're assuming that we have to accept that or audit managers, senior audit managers, audit directors, whatever the, your structure might be, and depending how big a department you are, we have to accept. You're absolutely right. We have to accept that they will be they will be across multiple audits. That's how we're structured. Um, we accept, you know, that that we accept that, um, and, and and they will have to context switch. Um, I, I always talk with them about a coping strategy, which is if you if you if you do have try try and reduce your context switching, but if you do have to context switch, then um, try and try and remove distractions. Try and be focused for a morning or an afternoon, or or uh, and it's a, and it's, a, it's or, or, or a period of time. It's a it's a really good coping strategy to turn off distractions, phones off, emails off, get that focus. Um, for, for many, it's a lot easier now. We're working from 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 home. Um, so I think having a coping strategy to context switching is, is really helpful. I've seen that help help many of the folk that just, as you rightly say, it, 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 you, know, you might be structured such that um, as a senior audit manager, as an audit manager, audit director, you know, chief internal auditor for that matter, um, you know, you, work, you that's the way we roll. You're across mul multiple audits and, and that's fine. But my point is try and give the teams the luxury of focus. We might be talking about a team of two, we might be talking about a team of six, but give, give the teams the luxury of focus. And the, and the principle for them is start less to finish more. And, it, and, it, and, and, and that always seems to land okay. You know, the principle of it feel, it, resource Tetris is, is sort of the way, you, potentially the way in which you think this is the most efficient way of doing it. But actually, if you start less, you'll, you'll finish more. You'll, you'll, you, you, will, you will get more done. Um, and, I, and I always, and it's a slight, slight um, jokey example, and, and, and indulge me for 30 seconds, I'll, I'll tell you it. it it's, you know, my two, my, we've talked about my two sons, and, and you know, they're hugely spoiled for Christmas. And a few years back when they were young, they were big into their Airfix models, you know, thousands of parts to these things. And it gave Lucy and I a bit of peace and quiet. And, and, um, and the grandparents one particular Christmas said, um, you know, what would the boys like for Christmas? Was low airfix models. And um, sure enough, hugely spoiled by their grandparents. Um, you know, they got given five airfix models each. I, I come down the stairs on Boxing Day to the, to the, to the um, uh, kitchen table, and you've guessed it right, they've opened all, all five boxes up, bits everywhere, you know, these model aeroplanes and boats. And, and I say, stop, you need to limit your work in progress. You need to start less to finish more. And they look at me blankly, of course. You start less to finish more, guys. I said, look, if you start one model now, you'll have it done in January, Boxing Day. You'll have it done in January. Start all five now. You won't be done till August, by which time you probably would have lost the parts. The glue would have dried up. I would have, you know, and I, and I so I, you know, I use that analogy as a, as a good way of saying, you know, it, 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 is, it is the way in which we can be more efficient if we start less to finish more. And it applies to, it applies in, in the audit planning process as well. Um, that's, that's where it takes some discipline to, um, to, to, to actually to spin off fewer audits, start less, not swamp the teams. Um, there's, one, there's one other thing that just springs to mind, Liz, in terms of the, the, the great illustration you gave in terms of three audits at a time. Um, so stable focused teams, if you can, I insert the word long, longer live, not long, long live to stifle folk, but 
longer lived to um, try and keep the team together so they could they could build into a high performing team um, and they understand how to work better together they can get through the I'm sure many of many of the folk listening will understand what the Tuckman team maturity model is but get through the stages of, of Tuckman into high performing and um, you know the, the, the teams the teams really will you know benefit as I mentioned from um, fr from having that that focus and having and having that ability to um, uh, to, to, to not to context switch, um, it, it, it is a, it is a big part of working in an agile way. Okay, um, I always found giving my son a, a marshmallow when he was little shut him up for most of Christmas Day afternoon and allowed us to watch some very old film. But I get where you're coming from with your ethics models, and I think that's a really good example. One of the other things I just wanted to talk to you about, and you mention it in the January, February issue of Audit and Risk magazine, where there's an article from you entitled Aim High, React Faster. And you talk about aiming high, you talk about think big. How does that work with start small? It, it feels a little contradictory, perhaps you could. <laughs> Oh well, yes. Well, you, so think big, start small. You've just missed one part off the off that. It's think, it's think big, start small, learn fast. Yeah. And that, and in fact, let me just loop back into the, the previous question and just and just finish that around the three elements to the mindset because it it feeds ni nicely into that. It's 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 the third part of the agile mindset. I mentioned the first two, go small, limit work in progress. The third part is listen to feedback, to learn. So, so it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good link back to the Agile mindset. And, and what we're trying to do is, as an Agile, as, as an agile minded auditor um, is flex, is, is, to, is to be adaptive, responsive. And when I always talk with auditors, I always talk about test and, test and learn. That always seems to be something that resonates with, with auditors. Test and learn, inspect and adapt. Agile coaches are quite keen on that expression um rapid feedback loops you know what we're trying to do is incorporate into our work ra rapid feedback loops and what I, what do i mean by rapid feedback loop what am i sh showing soliciting requesting feedback what have i done what have i done what have i learned and what next and so so part of the 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 the, the definition in terms of um, adopting working in a more agile way that you just mentioned, think big. So, so yes, be be bold. Have a really engaging, aspirational vision for where working in a more agile way might help you. Have a have a great, compelling uh, vision. Think big. Start okay. small. Back 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 to the back to the go small part of the mindset. Third part, learn fast. Think big, start small, learn fast. Because, um, and I think we're going to tip into this a bit later on, the, the, the way in which to start working in, in an agile way in your departments is just to be agile about it, is to is small experiments. Um, and and you, you, Liz, I, I really enjoy working with auditors and, and, and it's an easy conversation to say, well, where, where do you think we could start with this? Where, where's the place that's screamingly obvious that this might help you or working in this way might help you? And off you go and you, and you try it and you, and you be agile about it. You, you, you do more of what works and, and less of what doesn't. Um, but as, as, a, as, a, as a strap line for agility, think big, have a great vision, start small, deliver small, small experiments, learn fast. You'll soon work out what does and doesn't work in your context. I, I think that's a, a, a really good point, Mark. And I've always said, um, you know, when I do training, when I've talked to, when I've had teams, um, I've always said to them, find yourself a champion within the organization. Someone who really understands internal audit, what we're trying to do, why we're important so that if you want to pilot something a slightly different way of doing an audit or a report then you can use them as your if you like your project your pilot team to see how it works and you know if they are a critical friend they'll give you some really honest feedback you know one of those friends 
that will tell you if your bottom looks big in this dress when you ask them, not the ones that go, no, 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 Liz, no, it doesn't. You know, you want those really honest people to help you because that way we can do all of the things that you've talked about. We can adapt, we can be flexible and we can learn from doing it the first time so that we get better each time thereafter, don't we? Spot on, Liz. And, and, and that, that's, that's the great loop back into the final part of that agile mindset definition. Go small, limit your whip, listen to feedback. And you're absolutely right. Feed, feed, you know, feed, feed, the value of feedback, you, 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 you know, it, it's, 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 how, it's how, you will, how you will learn, clearly how you will improve. It's, it's when we call it the growth mindset. Um, and, and in order, it, it's 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 a it's a little bit more of an ask, I think, a bit more of a of a can we please please can we have your feedback? I mean, I, I sometimes get I get challenged. It's like well, we talk a lot to our stakeholders, but do but do you do you have a genuine rapid feedback loop? Do you show them what you've done, be it an early version of the audit plan, or do you show them what you've done in terms of um, your audit delivery do you show them you know you're thinking behind your audit planning do you show them what you've done you ask for their feedback and to your point you know you really want their genuine honest candid feedback because it's so valuable and then you say well what are we going to do off the back of that what have we learned and what's next and and, and i and i can't go any further without saying you know this this does not impact our independence. Asking for this feedback is, is, is you know, I'm, I'm quite often smart. How does, how does this, how does this fit with our, you know, our role as, 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 and our independence? Um, and, and, you know, to that, I mean, it'd be interesting to get your view on that. To that, I say, well, it doesn't change it. It's, we're just simply being, being more co collaborative and sharing earlier on in the process giving them more time to respond and give mitigating actions, for example, to have those conversations. You know, the stakeholder feedback is always, this is great because I don't, I, I, get the, I get the insights as we go, rather than at the end, and I've got time to, 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 to properly discuss it with you um, and have those honest and candid, hopefully those honest and candid conversations as we go. I, I think what, do you, what, do you, what are your thoughts in terms of, that, that, that challenge, the, the, how, how does greater collaboration sit alongside our independence? I don't think it's an issue. Um, I think too many um, of colleagues, internal auditors hide behind a, a wall of no, I can't, because that will compromise my independence. The new three lines model that our colleagues at uh, Global issued in July talks there about internal audit, aligning, collaborating, communicating, uh, and um, coordinating with our colleagues in first and second lines. Uh, and for me, that is the tick that says, actually, you know, this is now what we should be doing. And, and I think that you know, sometimes, and, and I can understand it because, you know, we very much prize the importance of our independence and objectivity, our stakeholders value that, uh, and therefore, you know, we need to be mindful of compromising that. But I think one of the key things that we have learned, you know, through 2020 and the pandemic was actually you know, we can be redeployed into first and second lines. We can suddenly find ourselves providing real-time assurance, perhaps working in areas that, you know, we weren't particularly familiar with. Um, and I had a, a head of internal audit who told me, she, she works for a local authority, and she told me that she was re redeployed into excess deaths. And she said, we did, I didn't even know we had a function called that. Uh, in our authority and suddenly it was you know where do we find mortuaries if the volume of deaths increases how many body bags do we buy what's our process and she said you know I learned so much did it compromise my independence no what it enabled me to do was to help my organization 
you know, make the right decisions around process and control ahead of making mistakes. So eradicating that awful example that is used repeatedly about, you know, internal audit comes along after the battle and bayonets the wounded. No, no, no. That's not what we're about. And that's not what we should be thinking about. And I think this is where Agile provides us with a phenomenal tool to help us, um, you know, rethink and change our mindset and really recognize where our stakeholders are and what they're looking for from internal audit. So just before I come back to you, Mark, can I just say welcome anybody who's just joining us um, uh, to our dedicated Facebook Live series. Today, our episode features practical tips and uh, insights from our guest speaker, Mark Williams, um, who is a, an Agile in Audit coach. So we have survived uh, 2020. We need to think about the importance of Agile in helping us survive 2021. So why, Mark, when we think of all of the uncertainties, do you think it's important to be Agile of mindset uh, as we go through 2021? Mm, I, I think it will help us deal with, number one, first and foremost, it, it's going to help us deal with uncertainty. My goodness, is there a lot of it around? <laughs> um, you know, putting, putting a, a, a brave face on, on what's happened, um, you know, it, it, the pandemic has highlighted, as in many respects, Liz, has, has accelerated the theme of agility to, 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 to cope with this. And I think it's going to be super important this year because we've, we've almost got this perfect storm, haven't we? We've got, we've got the challenge, which is that we need to deliver value and value quicker. We've got part of that perfect storm is that we've got the speed of change challenge. You know, we've got the fourth industrial revolution upon us. You know, the World Economic Forum talk about the fourth industrial revolution, the digital revolution, the, the rate of change within, within which the, our, you know, our world and our businesses is changing. You know, Richard Chambers talks about keeping up the speed, auditing at the speed at the speed of risk, at the speed of change. I mean, I love that. And that and that and that's what we're up against. You know, it's the perfect storm. We've got this, um, and Liz, you've always coached me to try and try and drop the drop the jargon. And um, I'm going to use a bit here. It's an expression from HBR from Harvard Business Review, VUCA. Um, first letter of each of these, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. You know, we've got a a challenging time ahead of us in the next year in terms of delivering value, keeping up with change, remaining relevant, and dealing with all of the... Harvard Business Review referred to VUCA as just a catch-all for it's crazy out there. Um, and, and I think working... Well, I believe, and I've seen it, I have the empirical evidence to suggest that Working in a more agile way will, will be a, a better way. It will be more efficient. We've tipped into that. We've tipped into potentially where the secret source lies in terms of efficiency. Um, we've tipped into where some of the tools will help you. But as I mentioned, you, you know, you do need to be careful with, with how you work. You can, you can use the tools and not be agile. Agile is a means to an end to repeat what I was saying at the very beginning. And, the, and the, 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 the means to an end is, is I think, to, to be able to deal with the things I've just mentioned in the coming year. Uh, and, and not just to survive, but to, to thrive, Liz. Um, if, if, and, I, and I like to think of it more as a, as a um, doing, 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 doing better with what we've got rather than that much misused expression, you know, more with less. I, I think it's, I think it's, it's that's not, that's, that wouldn't be an agile, a very agile approach. It's, it's, it's working on the, on the right things, on the right risks. It's work, it's identifying those risks. It, 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 it is, it is working in a way which means we, we, we add the most value we possibly can and as quickly as we can. I, I you, you, you and I have talked about the, the I'm going to share it with, 
with the audience the, the value of the metric, which is let's try and reduce our time to value, T to V. How could we reduce the time it takes to get value out to our uh, to our various stakeholders? Um, and it's a really nice it's a really nice question to ask, and, and it's one of the things that I mean I I, I I'll very often ask um, uh, an audit an audit um, a CAE or an audit director. Um, you know, how how often you know how how often can you can you get value out to your to your stakeholders? COVID, COVID has accelerated that that theme. Um, you know, and I and I saw a good few a good few internal audit departments just tackle it in a slightly different way. Um, in, in terms of almost creating a slightly different product from an from a, from an from, a, from, a, from the usual audit report. You know, flash they called it a flash report or an interim report or or um, you know, they, they had to get value out fast to, to stakeholders and it, it drove some really interesting, very agile behaviours, a very agile mindset. And, it, and, and I saw stable focus teams being formed and left to it. We've got to give them the luxury of focus. Yeah, great. Um, and, and working in a, and we should tip into this shortly, working in a, in a, in a, in a team level agile framework is an enabler to incrementally building your audit reports, you know, working in, in bite-sized chunks, often called sprints, you know, a, 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 a weekly or a fortnightly cycle is an enabler to an, allow you means to an end to allow you to deliver those to deliver those findings, those those observations, those conclusions, to deliver what you're seeing and, and have those those rapid feedback loops earlier in the process. So yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a challenging year, and um, and I think um, you know based on what I've seen to date, um, working in a more agile way could indeed you know uh, help you and help you not only survive but thrive. Those are some really great thoughts there, Mark. One point that I would just like to pursue a little further with you. You talk about um, time to value. Uh, which is great, and, and I couldn't endorse it more. But, but does Agile help me get out of the weeds? I, I'm hearing from um, internal auditors um, over, you know, through 2020, the nine, 10 months that were really challenging, lots of, it'll be good to get back to doing an accounts payable audit or an expenses audit or a payroll audit, things that we're really comfortable and familiar with. And, and I want to say to them, lift your head up, you know, look beyond some of those. You know, will those sorts of audits bring your organization to its knees? If what I go to the audit committee, if you go to an audit committee and say, we found two duplicate invoices with a value of 10,000 euros, are the audit committee going to be patting me on the back and saying, oh, brilliant, Liz? Or are they going to go, so what? You know, we've had massive problems with revenue, with costs are through the roof, we're going to have to make staff redundant, our reputation is shot to pieces, and you're telling me about two duplicate invoices? How does Agile, Mark, help me do that? Get, get out of the weeds and look up and really focus on what our stakeholders are looking for. Well, I think you've said it there, Liz, it's the focus on value. That's what agility, taking a more agile approach. And it's that obsession, it's that obsession with de de delivering value, reducing, reducing the time to value. I mean, it's, it's my goodness, it's an interesting conversation in terms of value and the value that we bring. And, and, and obviously, if you can, if you can identify that, you can optimize for it. So it's a, it's a, it's a, for another day, it would be a great, a great conversation to, 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 to have. And with, and with the audience that we've got, you know, how, 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 how what, what is, what is the value? What is, you know, impact, impact and influence, right? It's, 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 we, we, we're, op, we're optimized for the quality of our, of, of our output, of our findings. Um, but, but yet, you know, we, we're, we're very good at, as you say, sometimes take, sometimes just getting drawn into into the, as you say, kind of the weeds. Um, but it's it, what will help is this is this is this obsession with is value, 
um, and you know, and that's and that's and that's value across across the piece. And and it's it's not a conversation for now, but it's a good one around. Okay, so let's let's if we can if, let's identify the value that we bring, and now let's optimize for that. Thank you, Mark. So uh, I'm conscious that our time is running out on us. Um, and you've shared some really brilliant thoughts with us today. So I've got um, some uh, final questions, and I, I want you to be really focused on your responses to these questions. So I'm going to ask you for five top tips in terms of how to start being agile, five priorities when starting to become agile, how do I recognize if I'm already more agile than I think? Okay, right. I will be I will be focused. Um, so um, five top tips regarding how to start being agile. Um, we mentioned the first. Number one, think big, have a great vision, be aspirational, but start small, learn fast. A and two is to take a vertical slice through the department. My top tip is. Uh, when you're thinking about how to start being agile, take a slice through the department, which includes your senior bots. Um, they will get just as much as the, at, the, at, the, at the sort of single team level um, in terms of working this way and what you'll learn from that. So um, rather than going horizontally, so saying, oh, let's try this at team level. Um, I've seen I've seen organisations do that and it, and it's fine. It will get there in the end. But I think a, more, a, a better way is to take a vertical slice, um, CAE, Chief Internal Auditor, right down to the team through your organisation and, and use it. Try it. Le learn from that. Number three is to take volunteers. So um, your uh, in, in your departments, um, find those growth mindset folk that are saying, yeah, I'm willing to give this a try. Um, and if you can build a, if you can build a team or if you can find a team who are genuinely volunteers and not voluntold, big subtle but important difference, um, they they will they will have the they will have the mindset to give it a try and and hope and, it, and, and if it's a vertical slice, it will be made safe by the oversight folk by their leadership. and they'll they'll try it back back to go small and fast, you know and they will they will see how they get on. Four, they, they, will, they will learn from that and, and do what, what more of what works and less of what doesn't. Four is to, um, at team level, audit delivery team level, to use an out-of-the-box vanilla framework. Um, some folk might have heard the fact that it's, it, this is typically based on a thing called Scrum, which is from my old background. It's, 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 from, it's roots are in, are in IT, but... Um, Fundamentally, it's it's four events, four roles, four enablers. I mean, I, I can I can if, if anyone's interested, I can I can I can give them the I can give them the the out of the box vanilla framework um, in terms of team level agility, team level way of working as an enabler to delivering value incrementally or iteratively. And then the fifth thing, Liz, and of course I would say this, wouldn't I? But some coaching and some training helps, um, particularly on your point about champions. Um, but those are my five. Five priorities when starting to become more agile. Um, hey, guess, guess what I'm going to say? You need stable and focused teams. If you don't, then you will soon struggle applying the framework that I just mentioned because you'll end up with people going, I'm an auditor and I'm attending four stand-ups. I'm on four audits. I'm doing four stand-ups, four sprint plannings, four reviews, four retros. When do I do any audit work? I'm not I'm not in the world of making things worse so so as you as you become more agile um you know you, you'll be able to you'll be able to, to pilot start being being agile with a with a single team with a single with a, with a pilot with a single single audit or a couple of audits back to our earlier conversation and and that'll be fine and you'll learn from that but then of course you soon tip into the fact that you do need when you when you scale this up you do need stable and focused teams for the framework to work so it's an important point and an important gotcha to share with the audience. So five priorities. Number one, stable and focused teams. Number two um, is to experiment and be flexible, be agile with your approach, learn. Three is to, I call it social proofing. It's to take those lessons and be very audity about it. Um, you know, a balanced view. How did that team get on? How did we get on, guys, with what we've just experimented with and share it with others? Because that will take people with you. People... Other folk will be thinking, mm, I wonder if there's anything in this agile stuff. We'll look in and go, hmm, 
hmm, interesting, I might give that a try. And I've seen it. That's the way in which your agile adoption will grow organically. Social proofing, we call it. Um, it's going from, as a standard adoption curve, it's going from, from, um, uh, from, from the folk who ha are happy to be first to try it to the folk that need a bit more social proofing. The fourth point on my list, Liz, you made it, which is a great one. It's have champions, um, you know, build, a go build that guiding coalition, that center of excellence. It's a good way of, of scaling up the, 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 the knowledge to work in a more agile way. I've seen all sorts of different internal audit departments call them different things, but champions, um, you know, you, to your point, that's sort of a nice, a nice catch all for um, people who are, are, are going are, are gonna to help and build that guiding coalition and then um the, the fifth thing is probably get to the point where you've got people in the department who have a have a, a deep understanding of of agility uh, and how best to apply it um you you i, I see i see if I, I think there's an important point here that the the, the I've seen some very head scratch. I've seen some very head scratching implementations where I'm going, "You're doing what?" Um, because it's based on things that were done in the context of IT, and I think it's important that um, you don't you, you don't fall into that trap. Um, be it you know, context is key. Audit is a very different context to IT, um, and I think it's you just need to be well aware of that fact. And then final question, Liz, and I'll, and I'll let you ask any questions, but you said be focused, so I'll carry on. Um, how do I recognize if I'm already being agile? And you're absolutely right. You know, I get this, I get this, this question quite a bit. Um, well, we're all, and, and, and very often I'll say, yeah, you are, you are, you are being quite agile. Uh, you're not just doing stuff faster. You're incorporating this rapid feedback loop. Are you going small? Are you limiting your whip? Are you listening to feedback? Yeah, you, yeah. Um, so how, how do I already how do I recognize if I'm already being agile? I really like something called the heart of agile. It's from a um, it's from the context of IT, um, but it was created by one of the agile manifesto signatories um, to, to try and to, to try and simplify to summarize what it is to, to, to be agile. And there's four things to this. And it's just a great, a great opportunity to question. Well, how, how agile are we being? How One, how often do you collaborate? This might be at team level, this might be as a senior leadership team, but how often do you collaborate? How often do you collaborate with your stakeholders? How often do you collaborate as a team? How often do you deliver, back to this importance of delivery and delivering value and delivering value regularly, how often do you deliver, deliver value? And then how often do you reflect and improve? So the, so the team level framework has every week an opportunity for the team to sit back in the retrospective and say how do we get better together how do we build a better team how can we work better together it has that built in and it's a great it's a great conversation for senior leadership teams and internal audit how often do you get together to reflect and improve it's a great set of questions around what's your true agility called the heart of agile alistair coburn collaborate deliver reflect and improve and then we've talked about the time to value Great metric, good met. Not you know, measure what you care about, right? Um, but it's a, so one. No one single metric will, will will measure your agility. But I I think it's it's a good one. It's a really good one. Time to value T to B, and then the final thing, Liz, is of course stakeholder feedback. I I and I know you know back to the independence point, but it staggers me how little how little. Uh, maybe I'm being a bit unkind here. Um, we, we don't, I don't think we obsess enough on stakeholder feedback um, to the extent that we should. We don't, we don't, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's difficult. We talked about this at the beginning, um, but I think it should be, it should be more of a measure, more of an opportunity to recognize um, and, and to get better um, in terms of um, being agile. How was that? That was very good, thank you. I'm not going to let you go just yet, though, because <laughs> um, I want your your input on something else. So I'm sure, like me, you've already made your New Year's resolutions and probably broken them. Less chocolate, more exercise, perhaps. So let's pause for a moment and think about some professional resolutions for 2020. 
21 that we might add to our list. So I thought, um, interested to hear what you might say, look towards creating a three month fixed internal audit plan, a nine month indicative plan. Uh, building on what you've said, shorter, more focused audit engagements, prompt, shorter reports, that's time to value perhaps, heads up, looking at the big ticket items, let's get out of the weeds, agile will help us do this, become more agile, flexible and adaptable in responding to our stakeholder expectations, because I think they're going to have some challenging ones for us as we go through 2021. And I think data analytics is not negotiable. So those would be my six professional resolutions. Your thoughts? Wow, what a great list. What a great list. Um, the first one, um, could we move to a more continuous rolling wave annual audit it is a good one. I, I think the thing I would always highlight on that point is you're not doing the same process every every quarter or every six months or every month for that matter. I've seen a, a couple of audit departments try, try the same process, which is clearly big and onerous. And it's just like, well, this is not, this is, this is, well, this is a mean, you keep saying it's a means to an end. I'm saying it's going to try and make you more efficient if you, if you, if you um, still have a 12 month audit plan, there's some benefit to that for, for visibility, for coverage. Um, but to more regularly update it and actually to obs obsess on the now and near term and less so on the on the on the um, longer term. And if you can get into this more regular cycle, Liz, as you'll appreciate, um, for many audit departments who run a 12 month plan, they get three quarters of the way through the year and they've only got a quarter left of the plan. If you're if you're if you're updating it on a rolling basis, i.e. every every quarter, up pops a quarter full of blank space to populate with placeholders, you've always got this 12 month plan. So there's there's lots to that. But what it what it isn't is doing the same process four times a year or 12 times a year. Um, I really like your second one around shorter, more focused audit engagements. Um, and of course, time to value is a, is, a, is a really important point. We've talked a lot about that. Um, I think the, 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 key, the key this year in terms, I mean, I love New Year's resolutions. It's a very agile way of thinking about it. You know, they're small, think big. <laughs> to deliver small, they're small, you know, they're, they should be small little improvements, continuous improvement. They should be small improvements um, professionally, as we're discussing uh, professional um, New Year's resolutions. Um, I, I think the key this year is going to be is going to be working on the things of the highest value. There's never going to be a shortage of work, and it's it's about making the most of of of, of what we've got and getting the most value from that. And I and I do, and I know we've dwelled on it today, actually. We've dwelled on the, the benefits of, of teams, proper teams, stable focus, longer lived teams, um, as a way of being more efficient. The, the, the agile team level framework will help a bit, but not massively. And it's another important point to make. Um, it's very much more an enabler of, um, of delivering value quicker and incrementally, building that audit report over a, a period of, 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 of weeks rather than at the end. Um, so. So I think um, my, my, my New Year's resolution, to, to just to add to your list, Liz, is um, I'm, I'm, I'm specifically thinking about um, the senior, senior leadership teams in audit. And, and, and typically I, what I find is that they, they don't resist this, but it becomes a, a little bit of a struggle for them because they don't really know how to practically apply it. And so I'm, I'm, I, I run, a, I run, as you know, I run lots of training. I run some training for, for um, um, leadership teams in, in, in audit. And, and, um, and I'm going to do some more work. I'm specifically going to do some more work on that to, uh, to, 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 to make that better, small improvements to that in terms of um, uh, making it real for senior leadership teams to understand how to be agile, as we've discussed. And how to practically do it because I don't, I don't i don't think they resist it but it can look like that to the teams it's just they simply don't know how to practically um apply it 
Thank you very much, Mark, for, for joining me today and for sharing your thoughts with us, lots for us to reflect on and discuss with our internal audit colleagues. And I'm sure if anyone has any specific questions for you, they can contact you via LinkedIn, um, which is indeed how I contacted you or you contacted me originally. Um, so can I thank you all for joining us today? The live stream is available afterwards for those of your friends or colleagues who may have missed it, um, and it's on the Institute's Facebook channel. And please follow all of the exciting things the Institute is doing on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. As a member, you have access to the latest edition of our Audit and Risk magazine, which is available now on our website. And we focus on several key topics. As I mentioned already, Mark's got an article in our magazine on Agile. We're looking at refreshing the FS code and um, reporting the stepping up, reassuring, uh, reassessing the impact and implementation of the financial services code, along with um, you know, exploring some of the new skills that we're going to need, not just for 2021, but for the next four or five years. Um, for those of you that are members of the Institute, we also have a piece of technical guidance on auditing agile delivery. Now that is for us to audit or you know, teams within your organization that are operating in an agile manner, but the, um, the piece of technical guidance also goes through all of the stages of an agile methodology. So you know, it might be interesting for you to have a look at that and think about the internal audit um, scenario and what you're doing in this space. As always, I'm happy to take questions and you can contact me via email at liz.sandwith at iia.org.uk. Towards the end of January, we will have another Talk to Internal Audit where we will discuss the refreshed and published FS code, Financial Services Code, which we will be um, launching um, this week. Um, we'll have Gavin Hayes, who's our, the Institute's Head of Policy, uh, along with input uh, for key stakeholders, um, thinking about regulators, heads of internal audit, audit committee chairs, and um, how the code will support our colleagues as we move forward, particularly focusing in the financial services sector. Um, as we move forward, please don't forget to look out for Talk to Internal Audit, um, some that we did through 2020, we're now republishing and putting on YouTube so you can access them there. And of course, as we go through 2021, um, we will share our thoughts with you on a variety of specific challenges with input perhaps from you about topics that you're particularly interested in and inputs also from other members, colleagues and guests. Remember, please remember, because I think it's going to be more important this year than ever, um, talk to internal audit because the Institute is listening. Thank you, stay safe, and I hope 2021 uh, turns out to be a much more positive year for all of us. Thank you.